Part of our assessment considers the patients into two broad groups, those that are pathophysiological, which are essentially what Maitland called pain dominant, and those that are pathomechanical, which Maitland called stiff dominant. In the pathophysiological group includes other, um, other issues that weren't being considered at the time when Jeff first wrote. So that includes nociceptive, nociplastic, that includes central sensitization, that includes um, the um, uh, cognitive behavioral therapy and other psychological components of the biopsychosocial nature of the patient's disorder. So if you think of it, if you look at my hands and they represent a funnel, we start up the top in the subjective examination and we get an idea from the patient what's causing their problem. Then the patient does coming down the funnel, they do active physiological movements. And if they're clear and pain-free or there's minimal pain, we can do overpressure to them to see if we can reproduce the pain with overpressure. So subjective exam, active physiologicals, APMs, right? Active physiological movements. Then passive physiological movements, PPMs, okay? The PPMs that we look at, because there's never enough time to look at everything in every potential patient. The clock is always your enemy. So in the initial ses treatment session or assessment and treatment session, the passive physiological movement we would do would be those that were meaningful in the active physiological. And then finally, we end up with passive accessory movements, PAMs or PAIVMs, passive accessory movements anywhere, passive accessory intervertebral movements when it's applied to the spinal segments. From at each point in that assessment, I'm looking for the patient's, for reproduction of the patient's comparable sign. If I can produce it in each movement, then I have lots of options. If I can reproduce the comparable sign in active physiological movement, right rotation, I could give that to them as a home exercise. If I can do it in passive physiological movement, I could treat them with passive physiological movement. If I can do it with my fingers and thumbs over a particular joint or a particular spinal segment, then I could treat that. As I, go, as I assess down the funnel, and this is the way I teach Maitland these days, this is sort of, it's based on Maitland, but it's my own sort of input, my own thought process then what I do is I treat at the bottom of the funnel, the passive accessory, okay? The um, arthrokinematic equals accessory, osteokinematic equals physiological, right? The arthrokinematic movement, because in changing arthrokinematic movements, I can quite often immediately change the passive physiological and the active physiological. 